Hi guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DNB and today's video is all about how to create an interior collage in Photoshop. Now I realise I haven't done a tutorial for you in a while, but this week I'm going to be showing you how I created this interior design visualisation. And I think I'm also calling it a collage because it's not the typical style I usually do my visuals in. This is more the realistic style I do on our projects. But this was actually a mini project. I just took out some time last week to create an interior design presentation for my great aunt who's in her 80s and at the beginning of the year moved house all the way from Edinburgh to the other side of England. And a while ago I told her if she needed any interior help then by all means ask away. So I had one week to come up with an interior design scheme for her, meaning that everything had to be produced quite quickly, which is why I chose to do everything in this collage style, because creating a 3D model and visualizations and rendering them out just would not have been possible in the time frame. These visuals are great if you need to create things in a hurry, but you still want that 3D effect or just to trial things out before you actually produce them in a CAD program. So if you're interested, let's jump in. So just to give you guys some context, ever since my aunt moved into her home, she wasn't quite sure what she wanted to do and especially what colors to put into it. She actually gave me a lot of free reign with the living room. She just told me that she liked neutral tones, blues, lilacs, and that she hated green with a passion. And she decided that she wanted to keep her sofas, the rug, and she had a whole new shipment of oak furniture arriving that would also be part of the design. But other than that, she wasn't fussed about keeping anything else. And she also didn't have too many design requirements in terms of style. Her current living space is actually filled with light from the windows, but because of the current colors, it feels quite gloomy. And so with all that information, I ran with it to create this color scheme and interior atmosphere, which is much brighter and vibrant, but also sticks to the soft tones she wanted. Her rug that's in the living room and dining room has these kind of colors, which I also took a lot of inspiration from, even in terms of interior decor items, which you'll see later on. Okay, so now that you understand the context, let's dive into the tutorial parts of the video. So first things first, I've drawn these quick sketches of the visuals that I will Photoshop as they will act as a base to work on top of. And I use the site photos as a reference to draw from. The line work just gives me some perspective to work from, although I should mention that they're not done to scale. And anything I do quickly like this, I don't do to scale. I just do it by eye. And then I would usually go into a CAD program and do everything to scale on there. But for quick architecture and interior design visuals, this is fine. Okay, so now that I've scanned in one of the line work visuals, now I'm gonna start putting in the materials. So first off, let me do the wall. I'm using the polygonal lasso tool here, and I'm just going around the outline of the wall and I'll be putting in a certain paint color simply by using the Photoshop fill tool. I should also mention that I had already selected the paint color by using the eyedropper tool and literally clicking on the paint that I had chosen. Okay, so now I've found the paint that I'll be using on the other walls, which is a light gray tone by Farrow and Ball. And I simply eyedrop the color and it will come up in your color swatches at the top right. Once I've got that gray tone that I want, I then start again polygonal lassoing the wall just to create the basic shape outline. Now, like I said, this isn't a to scale or absolutely perfectly accurate visual, but the point of it is that it can be done quickly. So I'm really just outlining the shape from the line work that I drew earlier. And then I simply use the paint bucket to fill in that shape on a new layer. And that's completely up to you as well. You can fill the shape on your original layer, but then obviously it means that it's merged onto the line work drawing. So I personally like to create it on a different layer. So everything in this visual will be on separate layers. So the blue wall currently is on a separate layer. The line work is on a separate layer. And now the gray wall is on its own layer. 
because honestly things in photoshop can get quite confusing if you start to merge everything and you then can't really go back if you want to change something so let me just do the wall on the left side and this one has a window within the wall so what I will do is I'll fill out the wall just like we did and then I'm going to drop the opacity over here in the corner so that I can actually see the window and then cut around it. And you know, if I'm completely honest guys, you don't actually need any line work to create these basic shapes in Photoshop. But personally for me, I just find that I work much quicker if I have the basic lines already there. It just makes it a lot less confusing for you. And I'm just going back to my reference photo to actually see how the window looks. And then I'll be just using a different shade of grey to highlight the light and shadows around that area. Now let's move on to the flooring. In her house she has these really lovely oak wood floors so that was something that I wanted to put in quite quickly before I started putting in any furniture. Anything to do with materials is quite easy to find on Google Images, I find anyway. So I just simply type in oak floor texture, so if you were looking for a carpet texture, simply type that in and honestly there will be so many results. I was actually quite lucky because sometimes this can take quite a while to find the exact material colour that you want but mine was actually the first image. And then what I'm going to do is rescale it so that it matches the kind of shape that was in the photo. Obviously what you could do is hold and drag the image until it covers the entire floor but then that off balances the scale completely. So now what I'm going to do is just simply click, hold down alt on the keyboard and drag the image and that will copy it. But before we can mess around with the scale, we actually have to merge the layers. So to transform anything, you select the item that you want, hold down control and press T. But importantly to change and warp the perspective, what you need to do is hover over a corner and hold down control and this little white arrow will pop up. Then you just can simply click and drag that to whatever kind of shape you want to create. And I'm just leaving a perfect gap around the bottom for the skirting board. So it's definitely starting to come together. Now we've got the walls and the floor. So we've got the basic materials. And for the skirting, I'm rather than filling in by using a fill color, I am actually going to copy and paste an image from Google into the design, just a simple skirting board. Once I've selected that and copied it in, I'm going to obviously need to get rid of the blue background. So I use the magic wand tool to select the blue and simply press delete. If you still have some color showing, all you need to do is go back, so control Z, and just put up the tolerance a bit on the magic wand tool. And there was also this horrible square outline around the outside, so I switched to the eraser tool and literally just rubbed those edges out. So that I was left with this beautiful skirting board to work with. Now, rather than replicate this loads and loads of times, I'm actually just going to resize this one. Simply hold down the shift button and click and drag. So once I was happy with the shape, I then needed to give it a bit more dimension because obviously it does come away from the wall, whereas at the moment it's looking a bit flat. So with the layer selected, I click on FX and press drop shadow. I make sure that the color is obviously black to give a dark shadow and then I just play around with these settings. Like I said, I wanted to give the effect that the skirting board was a little bit further away from the wall, but obviously you don't want it to look too crazy. As you can see, I've got this overhang here. So I just use the rectangular marquee tool over here, select it and press delete. Okay, so now obviously, if I just rotated this shape to the side, it would not be to perspective. 
So again, to alter and warp the perspective of the skirting board, I'm holding down control so the, the little white arrow pops up and then clicking and dragging until I'm happy with the shape. Now, I wasn't quite sure how to do the door frame. I was debating putting a fill color in or literally using the skirting board and just doing three different sides. But in the end, I downloaded an image from Google And because the frame was white itself, I knew that I needed to drop down the tolerance on the magic eraser tool because it was still deleting the door frame. I still wasn't 100% happy because there was a little bit of jagged edges around the sides. So to make that really straight, all I did was use the rectangular marquee tool and just catch the edge of the door frame and press delete just to straighten up the edges. Now, obviously we don't need the bottom of the door frame. So I just selected the bottom edge where the door would be and deleted that area. Now it wasn't looking that thick. So what I want to do is now duplicate the door just to give the frame a bit more thickness. Then resize that just to give it a bit more oomph. And now I'm going on the original drawing layer and I'm going to just, with a paintbrush, erase those black lines. Again, like the skirting board, I want to make sure that it is a little bit further away from the wall, just so it's not flat, so I have also added a drop shadow to that one. The window is looking a little worse for wear, I'm not gonna lie. So to change that, I think what I'm going to do is actually put in the current window. So by using that image, I'm just going to copy it into the document, resize it until it's about the right size. And again, with the polygonal lasso tool, just briefly outline the shape. And I've also included the curtain because I will be adding a curtain anyway. Now, obviously my drawing is not to scale and the perspective is off compared to the image. So I'm just going to delete what I don't want and then warp the image to fit the windowsill that I drew. And of course, because the curtain itself is sheer and transparent, I'm going to drop the opacity down just to make it a little bit see-through. Okay, so let's move on to the molding around the ceiling. Now, because the coving has a curved shape, I'm gonna be using the magnetic lasso tool that really acts like a magnet and just goes around the line work that I've drawn. Just making sure that it gives me a precise shape to work with. Once that's selected on a new layer, I select a white fill and simply fill it with the paint bucket. I just have to resize that a bit to get rid of the black line. And I know it's kind of merging into the ceiling, but everything will come together soon. And what I'm going to do here to give it the effect of a curve is actually drop in an inner shadow this time, so not a drop shadow. Let me know guys if houses like this in America or wherever you are in the world, older houses are like this. There's this really texturized ceiling effect, which I think was really, really popular in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken. It's a sponging effect, but sometimes you can also get 
paint that's been mixed with sand to also give a texture that's quite common that's how her ceiling looks so i wanted to just put that into the design as well just to give it a bit more realism once that's in i move that layer to the top and the image was too dark so i bumped up the brightness and again i'm just using the same trick i use for the floor by copying and pasting the image until it filled up the ceiling I merged the layers and then I brought it right down so that the coving at the top was brought to the front and all you do to do that is simply hold down control and this bracket button on the keyboard. Keep pressing that. Just for a comparison of the ceiling, I refer back to the image and I think that the texture was just a bit on the heavy side so I dropped the opacity down a bit just to give a slight hint of texture there. Now I looked back at the image guide and I noticed that the space was actually much wider so to fix that what I'm going to do which I don't usually suggest this was just because I made a mistake is to select all your layers and merge them. That will then group everything to be one entire shape. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is start putting in the furniture. I think I already told you that she wanted to keep the sofas she currently has, which are these recliner chairs. I need to get rid of the white background. So again, classic old magic eraser, although there was still a little bit of white. So I zoomed in and just bumped up the tolerance so that there was no leftover pieces. The color didn't exactly match. The ones I had were a bit on the darker side. So to fix that, I go image, adjustments, brightness and contrast and I just play around really with all these kind of settings until I'm happy with the colour choice. So you see it's starting to match the image I showed a bit more. Once I'm happy with that I then literally click drag it down, hold and drag it into the file that we had previously and I just play around with the size until I'm happy with the scale. Like I said before with the skirting and the coving, the sofa is also away from the wall and there would naturally be a shadow behind. So I'll be adding a drop shadow again. This little angle circle here, just you can move that dial around to change the direction of the shadow. Okay, just so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me put in all of the furniture, which I'm going to do now, I'll come back to you with the final design scheme. Okay, so these are the final pages put together with the visuals, a mood board, and some furniture arrangements. And as you guys can see, it really isn't perfectly to scale and some furniture isn't the right angle, but that's just because online you can't really find, sometimes anyway, the exact furniture you want for the visual. But the point of this project was just to give her an idea of what she could achieve with the living space and how to incorporate the different colours she likes. And usually I do my presentations in this kind of way, but like I said before, the visuals would be a very different style. But considering I only had a week to do this, I think that the visuals came out okay. 
Let me know in the comments how you like to produce your interior or architecture visualizations. I actually have a whole playlist with interior architecture tips, so I've left it linked down in the description. And if any of you are new, then I just want to welcome you to the channel where we talk about interior design, home decor, and all that cool creative stuff in between. So if any of that interests you, feel free to subscribe. But if you are already a creative crew member, then please support us by giving the video a thumbs up because that really, really helps our channel reach even more people. I hope that you found the tutorial helpful. Let me know what you thought below. And I really appreciate it if you made it all the way to the end of this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.